Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. We're going to be talking about database connections and how one of our newest features called Amazon RDS Proxy makes it really easy to scale your database connections from Lambda to your relational databases. Just for quick introductions, my name is George Mao, and I'm a principal serverless specialist with AWS. Here's all of my contact information, so feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions if we, or if we can help you with any of these services. I'm responsible for helping customers adopt the serverless platform, and I work with customers a lot on services like Lambda, API Gateway, Step Functions, and also DynamoDB. I'm also a Virginia Tech Hokie, so if there are any Hokies out in there, in the field, please feel free to let us know in the chat. So we're here today, and thank you for joining us. I'm really excited that you're here. Uh, we have multiple moderators in the chat, so feel free to ask us questions during the talk, and then we'll also leave some time for Q&A at the end. So to kick it off, I want to introduce Amazon RDS, which is our relational database service. RDS is our managed relational database service, and it makes it really easy for you to deploy relational databases because we handle all of the hard details about database administration, all the scaling needs, and all the high availability that you need to have for databases. Relational databases are difficult to manage, typically because you have to manage all of the hardware, all the operating systems, and sometimes the, the monitoring that has to go behind the scenes. And RDS does all of that on your behalf, leaving you more time to work with your data and interact with your database instead of managing all of these hard details. RDS makes it really simple to scale because we have built-in mechanisms for adding scaling mechanisms. And we also have built-in high durability. We have, we have the option to deploy your databases across multiple availability zones make it really easy for you to back up and snapshot your databases with minimal or no downtime at all. RDS also has multiple different security mechanisms and options that you can use to protect your data at rest or in transit. So in today's world, applications need to connect to databases. And these connections, every time you open a connection, will consume memory and compute resources on your database. When you do that, that actually leaves less compute power to execute your queries. And oftentimes, serverless applications running on AWS Lambda functions can open tens and thousands of connections all within seconds. When that happens, your relational databases typically exhaust their memory and compute power, leaving you with slower database response times for your end customers. So developers like us typically work through two different solutions to help us with this. The first solution is to build a self-managed proxy. And when you build a self-managed proxy, the goal is to really reduce the number of database connections to your database by using multiple connection pools. The other solution is to build in application logic directly to your Lambda functions that handle all of the retry logic and all the failures that could happen when you have database exhaustion on connections. You also have to build in all of the details to handle all of the security and database credentials when you do that. Both of these solutions are pretty tough to manage and it's really time consuming and it, it takes time away from actually building the, the logic that makes our businesses unique. So here's an example. When your application can live on any compute platform, so that could be a serverless application running on AWS Lambda, or it could be applications deployed to Amazon EC2 instances. Or finally, you could have your applications containerized and running on Amazon Elastic Container Service. When your application is small, it makes relatively few connections to SQL to your SQL databases, and that's okay. But when you receive a large influx of traffic, maybe in, in response to a large event, such as a sales promotion, or maybe a breaking news event has just happened, your application will make more and more SQL calls to your database. So when that happens, your database needs to dedicate memory and compute power to manage all of these extra connections, leaving you with less power to execute your SQL queries. So developers will typically try to fix this problem by off offloading as many calls to the database as possible. So we introduce things like in-memory caching. So an example is using Amazon Elastic Cache. When you do this, you typically serve as many requests as possible out of your cache instead of making requests to your database. But when we do need to hit the database because of cache expiration, 
we typically try to leverage existing connection pools to our database. That way, all of our connections can execute quickly and use less memory and compute power on our databases. Now, this is all pretty difficult to manage. It requires a lot of developer resource and time. We now have a new feature called Amazon RDS Proxy. RDS Proxy is currently in preview, so you're all welcome to test it out, and we encourage you to try it out and let us know what your feedback is. But remember, don't run this in production just yet. So RDS Proxy is a fully managed, highly available database proxy for Amazon RDS. It makes your applications more secure and easily scalable because it manages a warm connection pool on your behalf. Many applications using our, our modern day serverless architectures using AWS Lambda have to open hundreds and thousands of connections, maybe all within just seconds. And this can, this can easily exhaust your resources on your database. So by using warm connection pools, we increase the efficiency of your database and require less compute power. But RDS Proxy also improves your database availability and scalability. So to do that, we manage a connection pool on your behalf, and, but the RDS Proxy also scales in response to, this, to the traffic and the load that you're putting on the proxy itself. Next, the RDS Proxy also makes it a lot more secure to talk to your databases because instead of hard coding your database credentials directly in your application code, you can leverage AWS Secrets Manager, and then the Secrets Manager service will handle all of the, the secure details about your, your connectivity needs. And finally, the RDS proxy is a fully managed proxy and it's compatible with multiple different flavors of databases. So let's take a look at that. Today, the proxy, RDS proxy is available in all of these different regions, Tokyo, Ireland, Northern Virginia, Ohio, and Oregon. We currently support the MySQL flavor of RDS uh, during the preview, and we'll continue to add more flavors of databases uh, in the next coming months. Postgres is gonna be added very, very soon. So the RDS proxy is an application service that sits between your application and an RDS database. The built-in connection pool feature abstracts away the complexities that you have to do to do connection management on your Lambda functions themselves. This makes it really simple to write your Lambda functions because you no longer have to write all of this application logic and retry logic built directly into your code. You have, your Lambda functions can specifically just focus on the services and the functionality that they're providing instead of all of the hard details about managing a connection to your database. RDS Proxy also makes it a lot more scalable because when you create lots of connections for Lambda functions, RDS Proxy has a connection multiplexing feature that uses warm connection pools and opens less connections to your RDS instances. The RDS Proxy will store your database credentials in AWS Secrets Manager. And then this will make your applications a lot more secure because you don't have to hard code any of those username and passwords directly in your Lambda functions. Additionally, you can require that your Lambda functions or your applications connect to the RDS proxy using secure TLS connections, even if your backend database doesn't support that. So as a developer, you have two options for security. Your first option is to use native database credentials to connect to your RDS proxy. And when you do that, you connect to your RDS proxy the exact same way you connect to a database today. The only change you have to make is you're gonna change your application code to talk to the RDS proxy endpoint rather than connecting directly to your backend database. You don't have to include any libraries and there's no proprietary SDKs that you have to use to talk to the RDS proxy. Option two is using IAM authorization to connect to a database. So in this method, your code never stores any secret information in your, in your applications. Instead, you make a query or make an SDK call to the IAM service, and the IAM service will provide a one-time token that your application code will use to authenticate to the Amazon RDS proxy and eventually to your database. So the key point here is to keep in mind that you as a developer have full control over whether you want to use native database credentials or if you want to take advantage of the Amazon IAM 
token service to provide authentication to your database. On top of that, you can choose whether or not you want to have secure TLS connections to your database, even without direct support from your backend database. So let's jump into a demo and see how this works. So on my screen is the Amazon RDS console dashboard. So on the left here, we can see there's going to be a new menu option called proxies. So if we click into proxies, you'll see a pane that lists all of the available proxies that you currently have provisioned. As we can see, I have one proxy that is provisioned and it's called MyDB proxy. So to create a new proxy, I just need to click this orange button called create proxy. And the first thing I have to provide is a proxy name. So I'll just provide a name, mydb proxy dash new. And as we can see here, we currently support the MySQL engine during the RDS proxy preview, but we'll be adding support for other various flavors of RDS pretty soon. So here's an option where you can require that applications connect to the RDS proxy using TLS. And you can do this even if your backend database doesn't support that and that really enhances your overall security posture. There's a couple options for how long you want your applications you, to connect to your RDS proxy before we time them out. We'll just leave this at a default of 30 minutes. And then we'll scroll down a little bit. The next option here is for you to configure which database this proxy will talk to. So I already have a database deployed and that database is just called database-1 and it's an Aurora MySQL flavor. So I'll click that. And now you have the option to configure how many connections you're going to allow the RDS proxy service to make to your database. And those connections are specified in terms of a percentage. So this percentage is determined based off of the max connections that your database will allow. So in this case, if I allow 100%, the RDS proxy will create and use all available connections on my database. If my database allows 100 connections, then this will create up to 100 connections. I can reduce this to 50% if I only want my database to use 50 of those 100 connections. But we'll leave this at 100% for now. I'll scroll down a little more. And this is where we have to provide the secrets manager secret in order for RDS proxy to create the secure connection to my backend database. I already have a couple secrets created and we'll just use this one, mydb secret. And then you have to specify an IAM role which allows RDS proxy to access this secret. So if you already have a role that can access this secret, you can choose them. But if not, you can choose create IAM role and this will create that role on your behalf. And finally, here's where you specify the security option that we just talked about. You can choose to connect using your native database credentials, or you can choose to have the Amazon RDS proxy service only accept IAM authentication. So we'll do that here. And your last option, which is defaulted for you, is going to be choosing which subnets your RDS proxy will belong in. So these are typically going to be the same subnets that your database service is currently living in. By default, uh, logging is enabled. So we'll enable logging and leave the setting as is. And then this last box here is just some terms uh, for the private release, the preview release. So I'll check this box here. I'll create my proxy by clicking this orange button on the bottom. And this process will generally take three to five minutes. So when that's happening, you'll see the status sitting in creating. So instead of waiting for that, I already have a proxy that's created. So we'll click into this and look at some of the details, my DB proxy. So when I click into this, I can see a couple things. The most important piece here is the proxy endpoint. So Amazon RDS proxy will create an endpoint that your application needs to target. So here is the endpoint that my application will be using, my DB proxy, and then dot proxy dash and then the unique identifier for my service. There's a couple options here that we, we just looked at. I use the default 30 minute connection timeout. Um, we're currently talking to the MySQL engine. And then I also have the service TLS enabled. 
So if we scroll down a little more, we can see that this is a, this proxy service is associated with my database dash one, and then it's currently allowed to use two different secrets. So if I go over to my secrets manager dashboard, we can see that I already have the secret created. And if I were to retrieve secret value, I would see a key value pair for username and password. So this is gonna be my secret information that RDS proxy will use to create my SQL connections. So if, so if we keep, if we look at the IAM role that my service will use to, to access those secrets, that's RDS proxy role, and then dash all of these numbers. If I go over to the IAM console and take a look at this role, RDS proxy role, and if I open the policy name, we can see that this policy provides this role the ability to get secret value for my secret. So that's all that's needed. At this point, I'm pretty much ready to make connections to this, to this RDS proxy. And it's already created a warm connection pool to my database service. So for this example, we're gonna be using a serverless Lambda function. So I have a Lambda function created, and this is the Lambda function dashboard. My function name is just my RDS test. And I'm gonna be connecting to the RDS proxy that we just created. And I'm actually using IAM authentication. So when I click test here, this is executing a SQL call. And if we look at my Lambda logs, I can see that we're starting the query, we're obtaining my IAM token, we're connected, and then we're just doing a select all out of my contacts table. So this is just echoing a single result with my email, first name, and last name. So if we jump into our code a little bit and see how this works, the first thing I have to do is hit the RDS signer service, passing in the host name for my RDS proxy. And then I provide a username of admin. And then this returns a token. And this is the token that I'll use in replacement of my password for this user. And then I make my SQL connection using the connection.connect API call from Node.js. And then I'm making a simple select star from contacts. And then I'm echoing all of the results right back to the console. And at the very end, I just do a connection.end. So as you can see here, there's no hard-coded information for database credentials, and this makes it really secure and really scalable because if I were to run this function multiple times, it would take advantage of the warm connection pool that the RDS service, proxy service is already created. So I'll just run this a couple of times, and as we can see here, the execution duration is fairly short, looking at about 120 milliseconds for this last execution. So the next question is, how do you monitor a proxy? The RDS proxy service is automatically integrated with the CloudWatch service. So we provide multiple different metrics and multiple CloudWatch logs that you can use to review how all this works. So flipping back to my presentation, let's take a look at how to monitor an RDS proxy instance. Out of the box, we provide multiple different CloudWatch metrics and logs. So a couple of the most useful metrics are gonna be client connections, query connections, and database connections. Client connections just gives us information about how many clients are connecting to the proxy. And a query request is how many queries are submitted through the RDS proxy. And then finally, database connections is how many connections my RDS proxy service is making to my backend database. We also have built-in logging, so you can go directly to CloudWatch logs and look up the logs inside the namespace with AWS RDS proxy followed by the name of your proxy. So let's take a look at an example of how the CloudWatch metrics look. Here's a screenshot, but on the top is the metric for how many connections my RDS proxy is making to my backend database. And I can see that there's a very stable eight connections being made to my backend database at all times. On the second screenshot, I've made a multiple connections using AWS Lambda to the proxy service. And we can see here in green is a number of queries that are being made. So we made 42 queries. 
And then in blue, we can see the number of client connections being made. So over 16 different connections, we've submitted 42 queries to the proxy service. However, the database connections are fairly stable at eight. So what this means is, as your applications scale and grow bigger and bigger, the RDS proxy service will use multiplexing so that it doesn't need to create more connections and consume more power on your databases. So finally, I wanted to leave you with a couple of guides for getting started. Please feel free to check out our blog here. We have a full walkthrough of how you can create your proxy service and take advantage of a Lambda function. There's some application code out there that you can use to test the service yourself. And then at the bottom is a link, aws.amazon.com slash RDS proxy. This is our full documentation and you can review the user guide as well as the API material for SDKs and CLIs. Thank you for your time and we will open it up for Q&A.